Welcome to the Precision Digital to Analog Converter Technical Primer. This course is designed to introduce this technology and the core information you need to know. The course is presented in five lessons as shown below. To receive credit for the course, you must view all five lessons and complete any learning activities associated with them. The topics that will be covered in this presentation are as follows. I'll go through the Precision DAC technology overview to present the basic information and requirements for the Precision DACs. Then, I'll discuss the key performance specifications, followed by the different DAC architectures present in the current Precision DAC portfolio, and finally, the key applications where DACs are designed in. This lesson one will provide an overview of the most common technology concepts associated to precision DACs. The objectives of this lesson are to understand how real-world data systems are sampled using a basic transceiver-receiver example, to present what a digital-to-analog converter is and how its output signal looks, and to find the necessary companion products for digital-to-analog converters, as well as their key requirements in order to maintain the performance of the DAC. The real-world problem consists of taking a continuous analog signal and applying decisions by means of digital signal processing to the signal. Digital signal processing allows for efficient and cost-effective means of allocating information correctly, such as bandwidth or capacity. Consider a very basic digital transceiver design, consisting of a receive path and a transmit path. In the receive path, a continuous analog signal that represents some element of information is captured at a finite point in time. This signal could be represented as a voltage swing over time. The conversion step occurs when that voltage swing is converted to a digital representation. The resulting digital representation, or codes, can be processed to extract the information content within that signal. Depending on the characteristic of that information, certain decisions are made such as route this piece of information to another network node or take a certain action with the transceiver at a particular time. The transmit path is the exact opposite, where the information needs to be delivered to a real-world device. A digital-to-analog converter produces an analog output which corresponds to the relative value of the digital input signal with respect to a fixed reference value, and in its most basic form is determined by the relationship shown on this slide. A key element of the transformation from the digital domain to the analog domain is that a series of finite discrete values are now represented by an analog variable, which result in quantization uncertainty. A reference quantity, either voltage or current, is accurately divided into binary and or linear segments, where the digital input drives switches that connect an appropriate number of segments to the output. The digital inputs may be supplied in different forms, such as transistor-transistor logic, DTL, complementary metal oxide semiconductor, CMOS, or low voltage differential signaling, LVDS. This table shows the relationship between the analog output range or full scale and the less significant bit, LSB, size for different resolutions. The full scale in this case is 10 volt. The product data sheets present the DAC specifications with different units so this table helps compare the performance of several products to understand the best fit to meet a specific application requirements. This slide shows the ideal transfer function of two DACs with different digital code representations of an analog output signal. The unipolar transfer function represents a DAC which produces an analog output range from zero to full scale 1 as 1 LSV. The digital input code goes from all zeros for an analog output voltage of 0 volt to all ones 
for an analog output voltage of full scale minus 1 LSB. This code format is often called straight or natural binary. The number of discrete values along the way depends on the resolution of the converter. The second plot shows the transfer function for a DAC which handles a bipolar output range from minus full scale to plus full scale minus 1 LSB. In this case, the digital code is called offset binary where a digital input code of all zeros produces the minus full scale. A code of 1 and all zeros produces an analog output of 0 volt, and a code of all 1s produces an analog output of full scale minus 1 LSB. DACs are usually in need of companion products, such as a voltage reference and buffering of the reference input pin and the output of the DAC. In precision DACs, the voltage reference performance is key to the overall performance of the DAC, as the errors from the reference source will be reflected in the output of the DAC. The reference is the most important point in any mixed signal systems, as any variation in it will affect all other points in the system. Some reference sources will drift if the reference current is not constant. Variation in the DAC reference current will affect the reference voltage. The key specifications to consider when selecting the reference source are noise, temperature drift, absolute error, although this can be easily calibrated out, and long-term stability. Techniques such as connecting multiple references in parallel can be employed to reduce noise and drift over time. Often DACs include on-chip references and or on-chip reference buffers. If a DAC does not include an on-chip reference or an on-chip reference buffer, the input reference pin may need to be buffered. The DAC datasheet will include any input impedance specification, so enabling the user to calculate if a voltage reference can supply enough current using this value is fixed. This becomes complicated because some DAC structures such as voltage mode R2R DACs have an input impedance that varies substantially with the digital code applied to the DAC. In such cases, the external reference will need to be buffered. The reference buffer for voltage stacks should be a low noise and low offset error amplifier, as offset errors in the reference buffer will transfer to gain errors at the output of the DAC. As stated previously, the reference buffer for a voltage stack should be a low noise and low offset error amplifier, as offset errors in the reference buffer will transfer to gain errors at the output of the DAC. When selecting the buffer at the output of the DAC, the amplifier can be optimized to fit the application, and there are a number of considerations. Is faster settling time or higher bandwidth required? Or is greater precision and lower noise needed? Cost, packet size, and number of channels are also to be considered. In general, DAC switches settle quickly. Consequently, the slew rate and settling time of a DAC circuit is determined largely by the output amplifier. The output buffer generally requires to meet low bias currents, low offset errors, and sufficient headroom. As stated previously, the reference buffer for a voltage DAC should be a low noise and low offset error amplifier as offset errors in the reference buffer will transfer to gain errors at the output of the DAC. When selecting the buffer at the output of the DAC, the amplifier can be optimized to fit the application and there are a number of considerations. Is faster settling time or higher bandwidth required? Or is greater precision and lower noise needed? Cost, packet size and number of channels also need to be considered. In general, DAC switches settle quickly. Consequently, the slew rate and settling time of a DAC circuit is determined largely by the output amplifier. 
The output buffer generally requires to meet low bias currents, low offset errors, and sufficient headroom. In applications where precision is a key requirement, the output buffer needs to also offer low noise. Whereas in applications where higher speed is required, operational amplifiers with faster settling time, faster slew rate, and higher bandwidth should be selected. At the end of the day, the decision of the type of amplifier depends on the application. We will now look at an example of a product that includes on-chip buffering. This is the block diagram for the 85754R family of quad-channel DACs, which features both on-chip reference buffering and on-chip output buffering. The internal 2.5 volt reference is buffered on chip and hence no external buffering is needed. The output buffer shown here is accompanied by range scaling circuitry, which provide a number of user configurable ranges, both unipolar and bipolar. Designed for ease of use, the 85754R is a system ready single chip solution, which eliminates a multitude of support circuitry including the buffering and gain components required by discrete implementations. Because this is a complete solution in one package, it provides predictable and specified accuracy and performance, reduces system design time, and simplifies PCV layout.